there are several ways to make clipping masks in Adobe Photoshop and I'm going to go over a couple of the ways you might find another way that works better for you. I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select the background part of my image. Um, that's the easiest part for me to select in this image. Um, you can use the other tools, other selection tools as well to select your image. I'm just going to do that and I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. Um, when I hit the delete key it will fill it, basically it's asking me to fill it with the color. Do I want to choose of color to fill it with and what color do I want it to choose. Um, by default, well that's content aware, that's filling it with that background image, which is pretty neat. Um, but by default it usually goes to foreground or background color which is the black or white right here. Um, you can also choose um, color dot 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 and you could type in um, for example um, in the RGB you could type in 000 and it's going to place black in there. Um, it's not really what you want. A lot of times you want it to delete the whole thing. Um, so what I'm going to do to get it to delete, I'm going to undo that. Um, I'm going to go down to um, the layers panel. Actually, that's window layers to get your pa layers panel up. And um, I'm gonna, going to actually double click the background layer because I don't want to see that lock button. I want to double click it make, and this just makes sure your background layer is locked. So you can rename it if you want. Um, and that that just unlocks that layer. That's basically all I did that for. And then if I click on this square with the circle in it, it's called the a Add Layer Mask Shortcut button. Um, it will delete or get rid of whatever I had selected. So since I had the background selected, it got rid of my building. I'm going to hit Undo, and it undoes that. And I'm going to go up to choose Select and choose Inverse. And now I'm going to click on the square with the circle in it and it deletes my background. That gives me an invisible background. That checkerboard pattern means the background is transparent. So I'm going to save that just as an example. This will be example one. Um, save it to my desktop and then I'll open up in Illustrator in just a moment. So when I save that, I'm saving it as a Photoshop file. You, there are several file types that's, that work with this. They're compatible with this invisible or this transparent background. I'm just going to try Photoshop. And I'm going to leave everything checked. It's saving layers and everything. I'll just save it just like that. Um, I can reopen this in Photoshop later on down the road. And um, it should work th there as well. Um, but for now, I'm going to delete that layer mask. Just that layer mask. And I'll hit delete and it deletes. I'm going to show you a second way before I go on to Illustrator. Again, I'm going to select the background um, and I'm going to choose up at the top, select inverse, that selects my building. So now my building is selected. I want to cut out everything except my building. I'm going to use a different technique here. This is the paths bar. So if you don't see that, that's under window paths. Um, you should see the windows panel. That's a bars panel. And what I'm going to choose is um, the flyout menu for this panel and choose um, make work path. That's making my selection a work path. So I'm going to choose make work path and for tolerance I usually choose one pixel. That's the amount of pixel variance that's going to give. Um, if the higher the number um, the less quality you're going to have. The lower the number the tighter to the selection you're going to have. And you see that it has made that a work path. You're not done yet though. Um, it kind of draws that invisible line around your selection where you had the selection. I'm going to choose the flout menu again or you can double click the work path. Either one. I, I'll just double click the work path. That's probably easier. And I'm going to save the path as path one. So just have to save as path one. You can rename it if you want. Name it building. So now it is a path. And um, you can actually have several paths in your design. For example, if I select this just random square, make that square a work path, tolerance of one, throws that square in there. I can um, save this as um, square and hit OK. Um, so now I have two paths and I can click on either one. It, they show up otherwise they're pretty much invisible. Um, and when I click the flyout menu I can choose path dot dot dot. That's the key to this this technique. You want to choose the flyout menu and choose clipping path dot dot dot. And under this you have all your paths in the, in the illustration or the photographs um, where you can select them. I'm going to choose building because I don't really care about that square. Uh, it was just uh, kind of a test. And I'm going to make the 
flatness 10 pixels. In my experience, 10 pixels is about right for the flatness. Flatness is the amount of curvature that the, the, all the curves have to them. If you if it's too high or too low, the curves or the selection when it comes into Illustrator or another program, it's not going to look too good. It might cut off some areas. So now you see I have BLDG under paths is in um, white text. It's kind of outlined. So that's telling me that's a clipping path. So I'm going to save this one. Um, and just call that example two um, and I'm gonna open up Illustrator I'm not changing anything I just call this example two path I'm just gonna change it, save as a Photoshop file and it's a Photoshop file now I'm gonna go to Illustrator and make my new document go into file new making a new document I'm just keeping it just a basic default document here and I'm gonna place my image into Illustrator um, so I'm gonna go file place to place this image and Illustrator. It's going to take me a second here. And I'm going to go to Desktop and I have Example 1 and Example 2. It should come up here at the top. Here's Example 2. Here's Example 1. See Example 1 is cut out. Example 2 is not. I'm just going to see what those look like. See if that worked. Um, and actually let me throw a, a box in the background so I can really tell. Um, throw that in the background and I'll add a color to it just so I can confirm that it has invisible background and it does um, so that's example one that worked and I'm going to go file place and place my example two in there as well and that worked now you see I've got some jagged edges on example two that goes back to my flatness choice I chose 10 uh, I need to go a little bit lower for that so the lower the number the, the less um, the, the the more detail I'm going to conserve in that um, and example one actually that one looks better um, it's just pixelated because I lowered it to a hundred um, pixels per inch resolution so I think example one might work better for you if you're doing this technique another option here actually many other options here um, I'm gonna go file place and I'm just gonna place my first image that I have my original image this is example zero um, and that's just my photograph and I'm gonna place it into Illustrator just like I did move these other images over and what I can do is I can trace around this this image with the pen tool or pencil tool um, this can be a little bit t tedious depending on the image um, so I don't I do this sometimes depending on the quality of my image and how well I can see it um, also you, you do need to be pretty proficient in Illustrator. This this photograph's pretty good for this. Um, it's got a lot of straight edges, um, but I'm just I'm just being very quick in this in cutting this out and doing this example. Um, you can go back and you can adjust this by the way after you do this. Um, but I'm making the clipping mask in Illustrator. So go around the whole thing, trace the whole thing, pen tool or pencil tool, make one closed path in Illustrator and what I'm going to do is go to my selection tool select both my path and hold down shift to select my image so both my path and my image are selected now I'm going to go up to the top object clipping mask make now it's important that your clipping mask is on top your path is on top so that path is going to become the clipping mask hit make and you see it made that path in Illustrator. Now because I wasn't very detailed, I didn't zoom in, I didn't get a great um, line drawn, it's not perfect, but the nice thing about doing it this way is I can go back in here and adjust my path Oops, with the direct selection tool just like I would adjust any other um, selection or pin, or pin path drawn tool in Illustrator. I could also use the pencil tool and trace over it to redraw it. Um, so it's kind of your own choice. What tools do you like to use? And it also really depends on the image. Um, how, what kind of quality is the image and how do you want it to look? Um, so several ways to do this in Illustrator, in Photoshop. So I hope this helps you to create a nice work path with the background removed.